The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Those who do not love me do not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is the big day. It's the day we've been waiting for. Today is Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit in dynamic power. In today's Gospel, Jesus tells the apostles and he tells us, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit is coming. Jesus wants us to know that the coming of the Holy Spirit is about to happen. Not only does he proclaim it here in John 14, but if you read in John 15 and 16, Jesus also tells us that the Holy Spirit is coming. He's preparing us for the coming of the Holy Spirit. In Luke's Gospel, the words of Jesus again, I send the promise of my Father, the Holy Spirit upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And in Acts chapter 1, again Jesus speaking, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. The coming of the Holy Spirit, according to Jesus, is going to be a dramatic event. This won't be some soft breeze in the trees. This will be more like a spring thunderstorm, a June thunderstorm that rattles the windows. And the reading from Acts today proves this to be very much true. Today on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit invades creation and humanity in a new way. The Holy Spirit is not just the idea of God or some small portion of God. The Holy Spirit is the real presence of the living God. The Holy Spirit is God. He is God like the Father is God and like the Son is God. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he does not do it secretly, and he does not do it gradually. No, the Holy Spirit comes in overwhelming, dynamic power. Let's go for a few moments to that place where they were all gathered together. Suddenly, without warning, without any notice, there's a sound like the rush of a mighty wind. Not a whisper or a gentle breeze, not gradual, but suddenly the Holy Spirit explodes onto the scene. And as if the wind was not enough, then there appears tongues of fire. These are not flames like we see on the candles. A tongue of fire is what leaps out of a bonfire. Tongues of fire have a certain unruly way about them. Tongues of fire carry with them a sense of power able to purify and to strengthen. The tongues of fire came to rest on each one of them. This is the fire of the Holy Spirit. One commentator that I read gave four names to the Holy Spirit, comforter, renewer, sanctifier, and vivifier. I want to focus on a moment for that, on that idea of the Holy Spirit as vivifier. This is one who imparts vitality, energy, strength, and power. Catholic writer Bert Gezi writes, the most underused power in the universe is the power of the Holy Spirit. So what happens on that day of Pentecost when suddenly, without notice, the vitality, the energy, the power of the Holy Spirit is, un and un is unleashed in that upper room? What happens is a group of scared, cowering people 
become powerful proclaimers of God's word. If we read on in Acts chapter 2, we hear of Peter's great sermon, and the result, 3,000 people were added to that day. This is not possible without the Holy Spirit. Later on in Acts chapter 2, we read that the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. None of this happened before the coming of the Holy Spirit in sudden, dramatic fashion of presence and power. The church in the Acts of the Apostles is a missionary church, an evangelizing church, given vitality, energy, strength, and power by the Holy Spirit. Should the church in 2019 still be a missionary church, an evangelizing church? Well, no doubt the answer is yes. According to the teachings of the church and of Scripture, the church should indeed be just that, proclaiming the love and salvation of God to all the world. Many people right here in our own town, in our own community, need to hear this message of love and salvation offered to them in the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. On this day that we celebrate Pentecost, I believe the church needs a new movement of the Holy Spirit. We need that mighty rushing wind and the tongues of fire with all of that dynamic power, with the vitality and energy associated with the coming of the Holy Spirit. We need a new Pentecost, or at least a renewing of Pentecost. Listen to these words from a Catholic youth minister from California. Do we believe that the same powerful spirit still resides in the church? Will I allow this spirit into my life in order to experience his vitality and power? And here's the real tough question. Will I invite God, the Holy Spirit, to guide me, to have his will with me, even if he guides me into places that are uncomfortable or even unpleasant? St. John Paul the Great writes, The Holy Spirit is the protagonist, the principal agent of the whole church's mission. I like this word protagonist. To me, this is someone who pushes us to do things we might not want to do, someone who forces us out of our comfort zones and to challenge us to new heights and new adventures. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. If we will allow him to move in us, come upon us, and into us, to overwhelm us with power from on high. Our Pope Francis, in the joy of the gospel, writes this, How I long to find the right words to stir up enthusiasm for a new chapter of evangelization full of fervor, joy, generosity, courage, boundless love, and attraction. Yet I realize that no words of encouragement will be enough unless the fire of the Holy Spirit burns in our hearts. A spirit-filled evangelization is one guided by the Holy Spirit, for he is the soul of the church called to proclaim the gospel. I once more invoke the Holy Spirit. I implore him to come and to renew the church, to stir and impel her to go forth boldly to evangelize all people. Pray with me. O Holy Spirit, soul of my soul, I adore you. Enlighten, guide, strengthen, and console me. Tell me what I ought to do and command me to do it. I promise to be submissive in everything that you ask of me and to accept all that you permit to happen to me. Only show me what is your will. Amen.